Atheist Nomads, episode 86. Parental Advisory, news for March 19, 2015. Atheist Nomads is proudly brought to you by Archway Hosting. Check out their low-price, full-featured hosting solutions at archwayhosting.com. That's A-R-C-H-W-A-Y hosting.com. We are the Atheist Nomads, bringing you history, science, politics, religion, and interviews with leaders in the atheist community. Not all those who wander are lost. Welcome to another episode of Atheist Nomad. I am Dustin. Joining me as always is Wesley. Hey there. Hi there. Ho there. And as a disclaimer, this is an adult (laughs) podcast. If you are listening with your children, you are an idiot or have... Or, Or just Paul. (laughs) <laughs> or have very mature children. <laughs> uh, but yes, this there, there this is explicit. There is uh, parental advisory. We do cover adult topics like religion and politics and violence and sex. and I might say pe- penis on occasion. Nothing is off limits. So yes, if yep. you are a child or have children with you, um, please take this all into consideration. Penis. <laughs> <laughs> And there, I, I will be recording a uh, parental advisory to be adding into the the intro stuff before we we start. But yeah, needed to get that out there before. Uh, anyway, we will get to that feedback later. Um, and that goes for all of our past episodes, and again for all of our future episodes. Yeah. So yeah, because yeah, apparently just marking it as as explicit in iTunes and everywhere else isn't enough, Paul. Huh. Penis. <laughs> <laughs> I do have an update on the Ada County Highway District invocations. Oh. Uh, w- one week after the resolution passed, uh, they had a vote at their meeting to reopen the resolution. Mm-hmm. The following week, they discussed it briefly and voted four to one to reject it. Well, I'll be damned. The media coverage about this made them look like inconsiderate assholes. The staff (laughs) was very displeased with it. And Mm -hmm. everybody that testified was opposed. Uh, What what Paul had had, uh, described, them looking like they were going to to vote it down. Uh, And in the end, you know, initially it was uh, three to two in favor of of having invocations. Mm -hmm. But... Public opinion turned against them enough that they they turned it around. Well, fucking hooray. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's really awesome to have a, a, a win like that. Especially in Idaho. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> Ada County, you know, where Boise is, it's, it's the liberal part of Idaho. <laughs> yeah. And I well, guess the only other thing for, for the... Uh, this uh, opening section is I am headed to the Seattle area. Uh, oh yeah. We'll be getting in sometime around, you know, early afternoon on Friday the 27th of March and I'll uh, we'll be heading back home uh, that Sunday just be there for the weekend. Uh, Lauren's going to be going to Emerald City Comic Con and I will be drinking with Wesley and Sam and other fun people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Oh, yeah, and my birthday is, well, Saturday, the 21st. So, you know, if there's any good listeners out there that are actually going to listen to this in the next couple of days in our area, you know, let us know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and if, if, if you want to meet up uh, when I'm in town, uh, buy me a drink. Yeah, <laughs> let me know. Let me know. <laughs> uh, you, can, you can get a hold of us, contact at atheistnomads.com or just me at dustin at atheistnomads.com. Or Wesley at Ditto. Mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. Anyways, anyways. <laughs> All right. Uh, what do you have for us for history? Oh, just a whole bunch of shit. Oh, goodness. All right. So, penis. Um, This day in history, 1916. Uh, the first plane missions were flown. Yeah. Um, so, in what seems to be the actually the first time in history, 
eight Curtis Jennies fly into Mexico to scout for Pancho Villa. Yeah, he really was a real person. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, scouting for Poncho Villa so General Pershing could capture him. Uh, give a little backstory on this. Poncho seemed rather pissed, uh, over Woodrow Wilson's support of Mexican President, uh, Venustiano, uh, Carranza. Yeah. Uh, Poncho had just raided the town of Columbus, New Mexico, and in doing so actually killed 17 Americans. Whoopsie. Uh, uh, Poncho headed back over the border and, yeah, Woodrow Wilson, of course, ordered uh, General Pershing to, to give chase. And yeah, well, after 11 months of failed missions inside Mexico and, you know, a big dollop of Mexican diplomatic pressure, Wilson ordered the troops home. So check one for Poncho. <laughs> man, oh, man. So, yeah, our, our first attempt at an Air Force mission totally failed mm -hmm. after after almost a year that this theme will reoccur in just a minute. <laughs> yeah. And one thing that's, that's interesting is that oh, comes yeah. out of this. Uh, the uh, article mentions him as a uh, Pershing, that is as mm -hmm. a brigadier general. Uh, he not only was the commander of the expeditionary force against Pancho Villa, but the next year he was the commander of uh, the U S or excuse me, the, American expeditionary force to Europe for World War One. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. <laughs> by his retirement, uh, not that much later, is nineteen twenty four. He had the uh, was a four star general with a title of General of the Armies. In all practical application, um, he is considered the highest ranking member of the army. Other than George Washington, hmm. because a general of the armies outranks a general of the army. Well, yeah, that would cover all militaries. Uh, well, no. General of the armies doesn't cover like uh, that army, would just navy, be with, marines. No, that'd just be within the army. Uh, but hmm. generally, a uh, it, it was it's really just weird semantics that they take a little too seriously because uh, you know, a general of the army is like in World War II, was a general who oversaw multiple commands that were, you know, like, at a, at a theater level. Like the Pacific Theater. Who was in command of other full four-star generals. Okay. Hmm. Follow yeah. me down. Yeah. Good info. Okay, he, he was a major general by the time World War I started, and he was promoted to a full, you know, four-star general, which is the first time that the U.S. had had a four-star general since General Sheridan in 1888. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's it. <laughs> okay. And this day in history, 1931, Nevada legalizes gambling. So, yeah, um, Nevada was a totally dry, desolate state during the Great Depression and, you know, pretty much like every other time. But, uh, anyways, during this time, the Comstock mines of silver and gold were drying up. People were leaving in droves. But still, uh, 1931 started looking up. Turned out to be a bit of an interesting year for Nevada. First, they legalized gambling. Then, later in the year, divorce. Hmm. Huh. Man, crazy. But, uh, you know, don't even pause a second. You know, the old school mafia had a lot to do with getting the money ball rolling. Yeah, they opened a lot of the original casinos in Las Vegas and, you know, really just built the foundation for every building that came in that town afterward. Yeah. Well, without pr prohibition, they had the, the mafia had to do something to, to keep busy. Oh, goodness. And they had the money rolling in by droves. Uh, I know just a few years after legalization of gambling, you know, the, the, Ve these Western Vegas mafias were getting, they were getting some jealous stares by the, the people in Chicago and New York, <laughs> but man, oh man. Yeah. They were making some crazy money back in the day. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's more than a couple people buried somewhere out in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Oh yeah. And I was telling about that, you know, that theme. Yeah. Uh, this day in history, 2003 war in Iraq begins, AKA, 
uh, Iraqi freedom, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Operation, uh, Iraqi. Well, there was Iraqi freedom and enduring freedom. I think enduring freedom came later. Yeah. The, the British but, had cooler names like operation 007. <laughs> okay. I, that I, is kind of cool. I think they also had an operation golden eye. They did. Yeah. That one. I, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So yeah, I was talking about repeating themes. Yeah. We're over there for many years and really didn't accomplish a damn thing. We created but, ISIS. Oh yeah. Uh, well, yeah, but that's, I'm sure that was by blowback of some sort. Uh, we, we, thing that we didn't hear about. We also created a whole bunch of, uh, veterans with missing limbs, missing limbs and mental PTSD. illnesses that we yeah. won't take care of. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Oh, goodness. Yeah. What a fuck up that was. Uh, if Just you are one always. of those veterans, uh, thank you and sorry. You deserve yeah. a lot better. Oh, fucking it. You do. Yeah, I've I've always said I support our troops, but man, it's the government. I'm sorry. Yeah, they're fucking our shit up. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> we 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 never should have gone into Iraq and oh. <laughs> going in on a, a case made of lies. Oh yeah, because because you know chemical weapons and scuds and yeah, holy shit. <sighs> and at the very least, if we're going to go to war, there's there's two. Two principles that I think really need to, to always apply. You rebuild the country you destroyed, and you take care of the veterans when they get home. Yeah, worked for Germany. We shouldn't have homeless veterans. Uh, veterans should not be having a hard time getting the care they need for their their medical problems they developed in their service to our country. And yet, we fucked up on both accounts. <laughs> All right, let's uh, go oh. ahead and move on to science and technology, yeah. which is just as depressing this time around. Oh, the first one's kind of funny. Yeah, yeah. So Ted Cruz is the chairman of the Senate committee that oversees NASA's budget. Boo. Yeah, Ted Cruz. And so... When he got the the eighteen point five billion dollar NASA budget request for twenty sixteen, he had some questions for NASA's administrator. Sure, as well sure. an idiot child would. Yeah, uh, Charles Bolden, uh, and, and Bolden was quite bold in his responses to the fucking senator from Texas uh, as parental advisory. Parental advisory. Um. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, Cruz uh, started off with. And I, I watched the clip. Literally started off with, I would like to start by asking a general question. In your judgment, what is the core mission of NASA? And Bolden responded quite well. Our core mission from the very beginning has been to investigate, explore space and the Earth environment to help us make this place a better place. Uh, Cruz had a lot of pushback, and it was pretty infuriating to watch. Um, he said... I'm concerned that NASA in the current environment has lost its full fo focus on that core mission. Um, that core mission being space exploration, um, which he said that, or that's what inspires little boys and little girls across the country. And Bolden had a very well said response that included an awesome line along the lines of, we can't go anywhere if the Kennedy Space Center goes underwater and we don't know it. <laughs> and that's understanding our environment. Yeah, that, it, it, it's not like they're in the Andes or something at the Kennedy Space Center. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah. And with not a budget of eighteen billion. It's not like we're going very far into fucking space, anyways. Yeah. Well, give okay. me some fucking money. Cruz's biggest concern was the fact that the the budget for exploration was going down. While the, there was a huge bump in the budget for Earth sciences, uh, a lot of that increase for Earth sciences was because, well, for one, we need to know how bad global warming really is, you know, now. Uh, we know it's going to be bad, but there's already problems, and we need to be able to address those, you know, now. And mm -hmm. there was also uh, the, the decrease is because costs have gone down. We have private enterprise getting us into space cheaper. 
we don't have a space shuttle program we're we're having to maintain and the mm-hmm. the Orion project and space launch system project is continuing right along schedule the fact that a government body isn't needing as much money for something as they thought they would is pretty fucking awesome sure yeah <laughs> but oh you shouldn't be looking at earth keep your eyes outward yeah fuck. well i mean if you want to study the whole earth at once you know doing it from space is a pretty easy way to do it so what better place what better company or you know government agency is there to do that than yeah fucking nasa yeah and and uh bolden also made a, a pretty good uh play on nasa's name for all of this <laughs> it is the yeah. national aeronautics and space administration aeronautics is the the big capital a that comes before space in its name yeah so yeah it's not just about space yes space is important yes exploration is important we also need to know what the fuck is going on in our own world (laughs) Ah, well and and speaking of of places like the kennedy space center that might be sinking uh, that are definitely in florida yeah florida has a unwritten policy within their state government the uh government of of governor scott that doesn't allow them to use the word climate change or global warming yeah you might be looking for another job if you mention one of these terms in a state that has real problems going on now uh they they also can't use the word sustainability oh really so nice. if you're trying to describe uh how to maintain you know the sustainability of a flat land with very low elevation uh, that might be negatively impacted by climate change you can't uh, if you want to talk about flooding problems at miami beach when super storms are coming through and the sea level is rising flooding out their their sewage system you can't talk about climate change or global warming and I'm just going to give you a, a quick primer. If you've never seen what this guy looks like, Governor Rick Scott, if you're surfing through Facebook and you see this really tall looking bald guy that looks like Mr. Hom from Star Trek, but he's wearing a suit, it's probably him. Just <laughs> saying. Mm. Yeah. What a dick. Oh, sorry. Penis. Yeah. And, and he, nobody should have been surprised that he would be a douchebag. Uh, his, previous job was with the hospital corporation of america and he resigned in the middle of a massive medicare fraud scandal oh well good for him with a massive massive uh fine (laughs) i wonder where he got all of his money for that campaign Mm. yeah anyways Mm. yeah moving along uh nasa looking at the Earth, with satellite images, uh, ha- has has shown uh, sh- shown a light on California's drought problem. Uh, a, a NASA JPL uh, scientist, uh, actually, he's the senior water scientist at the JPL. Uh, Jay uh, Famigaletti uh, wrote a, a op-ed in the Los Angeles Times about California's water supply, and in this article, we got pictures. From taken from space, presumably by actually by NASA, um, of the amounts of ice and snow in January uh, on January 13, 2013, and January 13, 2014. And it is a shocking decrease. Oh, goodness, yes. That is fucked up. Yeah. There is just a little bit of snow and ice on the, the tips of the peaks. Versus, a, like, tons of snow and ice. That's more like just a few glaciers left. Yeah, there ain't shit. And it's even worse now. And it's not just California. But, you know, looking at California, uh, they're, based on his estimates, California has lost 12 million acre feet of stored water every year since 2011. Fuck. The combined water resources for the Sacramento and San Joaquin River basins... This includes snow, rivers, reservoirs, soil water, and groundwater. 
Last year was 34 million acre feet below normal. Uh, the wet season ha- is drawing to a close, and January this year was the driest in California record. <laughs> Groundwater and snowpack levels are at their all time lows. His estimates are that California is down to a one year water supply. Fucking awesome. Yeah. Uh, I actually found an article today that actually tells what is causing this. Would you like me to Mm -hmm. tell you? Uh, Rick Wiles says that homosexuality and abortion rights cause California's drought. So, yeah. um, (laughs) Right. Apparently, apparently, you know, it's the gays and abortion. Yeah. That, That makes perfect sense. Rain will follow repentance. <laughs> That's what he says. Yeah. And unless he's wrong and we need to be doing a naked orgy fueled rain dance. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm for your idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so California's reservoirs are drying up. The uh the backup supply is groundwater and that's rapidly disappearing. There's mis- uh, miserable loss in elevation caused by the depletion of the aquifers. And most of that uh, extraction of water from, from the ground is, well, excessive and unsustainable, as he put it. And it's for agriculture. Man, we might end up having like a, a, a mass exodus out of California. Mm-hmm. Water prices might just soar. Well. If if you don't have water, you don't have agriculture. Mm-hmm. The, I, I think they would be able to... I would hope they'd be able to... Okay, now, there's going to be water shortages for people as well. Uh, so they'll have to cut all the agriculture or cut out people. Uh, I would suspect agriculture would be cut first, which would devastate California's mm-hmm. economy. Yeah. And, yeah, people would have to move somewhere else. If you cut out pools, the stars are leaving. Mm-hmm. They better not come to Idaho. We don't have the water. <laughs> hey, I hear the Puget sounds nice and wet. Yeah, no, no, nobody likes it here. It, rain, <laughs> it rains way too much. It all just rolls into the into the ocean. No, it's bad, horrible. Anyways, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a uh, German biologist uh, offered a one hundred thousand euro prize four years ago. Uh, to anyone who could prove that measles is caused by a virus. Uh, this is because he is convinced that it is psychosomatic. Oh, yeah. He's and a yes, he, he's a biologist who thinks that it's psychosomatic. Uh, when a German doctor, uh, David Barden, gathered evidence from a bunch of medical studies and gave them to Mr. Lanka, uh, he dismissed them. But a court in Ra- uh, Ravensburg uh, ruled the proof was sufficient and that he has to pay up. <laughs> now, of course, Lonka is going to appeal it, but <laughs> oh, man, this is awesome. Yeah. He told a, <laughs> uh, told a regional paper, it's a psychosomatic illness. People become ill after traumatic separations. Right. Yeah. Like the 18-month-old boy that died in Berlin last month for measles. Or maybe the 22,000 cases of measles in Europe since 2014. It must be because of all the divorce and broken families. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Psychosomatic. Yep. Fuck him. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Europe. Get with the vaccination program. Yeah, Germany's a little backwards in that. They they like their homeopathy and, and weird shit. Yeah. <sighs> on to a happy story. I like this one. Yes. A seven-year-old named Alex has a not completely formed arm, and so he's been using prosthetics, and uh, this most recent one that he just got looks like Iron Man's arm, and was delivered to him by Robert Downing Jr. Sweet. It gets even better, though. Uh, Mm -hmm. Downey had the arm from one of his actual Iron Man costumes with him. And they got to compare them, and he was telling the kid that his was better. Nice. And this is all being done by a group of engineering students from University of Central Florida. Uh, They're saving money from coffee and taking donations in. Uh, This limb 
costs three hundred and fifty dollars. How amazing is that? Just all three D printed. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful and it's effective. It, it's not as good as you can get. You know, the the the, the best of the best in bionic limbs. Uh, Dude, it's three hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah, you can't keep a kid in ten thousand dollar arms that they're going to outgrow, but yeah, you can sure. in a three hundred and fifty dollar three D printed one. Fucking a. You know, and some of those some of those components can be replaced. You know, like the the upper arm segment mm-hmm. could probably be replaced the next year, and you know, leave the lower arm for another year, and then. Well, this is actually the uh, this kid actually got one uh, for Christmas from this group. Uh, mm-hmm. It was an Optimus Prime arm. <laughs> yeah, and, and this Seriously, one that's slick. This one is is controlled by uh, bicep movements. So you flex the bicep and it, it closes the hand. Uh, that, that That's highly effective. Mm. Uh, yeah. And uh, if, if you want to help support this project, uh, you, you can follow the link in the show notes. Uh, it'll take you to the Engadget article. Watch the video of Robert Downey Jr. Uh, presenting this to the kid. And then uh, go to their website, and uh, 3dhope.com, and, and uh, you can give them a donation. Yeah, these guys totally deserve it. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> All right, yes. that's it for science. Uh, in the last few episodes, except for the most recent one, uh, we've had promos from other podcasters. Uh, mm-hmm. We don't have any right now, so if you are a atheist or skeptic podcaster uh, listening and you want to swap promos, mm-hmm. uh, go ahead and contact us. And now it's time for Politics and Religion. Uh, first off, we've got uh, well, some pretty shitty tragedy. Uh, Avit, Avajit Roy was a American citizen of Bangladeshi origin uh, and a, a blogger. Uh, he was an atheist, and he spoke uh, very bluntly about the issues with Islam. His most recent book is titled The Virus of Faith. That's his most recent of seven books. Mm-hmm. And he went to back to Bangladesh to go to a book fair. And while he was walking back from that, uh, assailants came up and from behind and stabbed him with machetes and knives, killed him and left his wife bloodied and missing a finger. Motherfuckers. So, yeah, this was an uh, Islamic group, Ansar Bangla 7. Um uh, apparently they tweeted target down here in Bangladesh afterwards. Motherfuck. Yeah. And seriously, can't <sighs> if your ideas are so easily defeatable or so, I, I, I just don't even get why you would do this. I don't know. Uh, a witness said, I shouted for help from the people, but nobody came to save him. I, I don't blame one person for not going up against, you know, a, a gang. Yeah, of fucking thugs, religious thugs. There are uh, fortunately rallies uh, in in protest of the the killing, um, and sit in protest as well. Uh, the government has condemned the attack. Uh, it looks like there's been charges against at least one cleric for this. Um, but a software engineer from Afraid of Georgia, outspoken atheist and critic of Islam, is dead. <sighs> it's horrible that this this happens this is the 21st century no one should be killed for their words and yeah, the, 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 the so-called religion of peace should not be advancing their agenda with violence well i'd like to see reza aslan defend this shit yeah <sighs> it's always easy to, to try to defend stuff like this because oh you know, it's just a few extremists it wasn't it's not islam doing it even though Islam, or the, the Quran does explicitly stay, say that true believers must kill the infidels. What are you going to do? Roy was a, an infidel. He was a apostate. The worst kind of infidel. Yeah. <laughs> and if this story sounds familiar, it's because a Bangladeshi atheist blogger uh, who actually did live in, in Bangladesh at the time uh, was... Uh, murdered in 2000, or was murdered in 2013, 
uh, under uh, very similar circumstances, uh, stabbed to death. Uh, the uh, court in, in Dhaka has scheduled a, t- a trial for eight su- uh, suspects in the death of Ahmed Rajib Hadir, and that is scheduled to open April 21. Uh, seven of them uh, were present in court when the judge read the, the charges, including a cleric who has been implicated. Uh, the prosecutor... Uh, said that the students were inspired by the sermons of this cleric and carried out the attack because Hadir was a atheist and he defamed Islam. The eighth suspect uh, has yet to be arrested. Uh, there is currently a $6,400 reward for uh, information leading to his capture. Well, it, it's good to see that the, the cleric is getting sentenced for this also. Uh, let's see how tough the court is and see if they actually convict them of anything first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and Hadir actually blogged under a pseudonym, Thaba Baba. Oh, and I'm, sure, I'm they, sure that helped. But they still figured him out. Yeah. Yeah. If if you're in a place like Bangladesh and you're listening to this, be careful. Ah, uh, they found him with wounds on his head, which police speculated was an attempt to behead him. They could, they could, they fuck that up. Ooh. Yeah. <sighs> a, a continuing trend here. Yes. And last week, uh, or was it this week? It was, oh, it was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> this is quite recent. Um, <laughs> and earlier this week in uh, Tunisia, a group of Islamic extremists, okay, two gunmen. Uh, went into the National Bardo Museum and killed 21 people. The Islamic State has claimed responsibility for this, uh, but authorities don't actually think they're related related to them. Uh, they think it was more likely that they were part of a extremist group in southern or central Tunisia uh, that is allied with Al Qaeda. Hmm. And what's really tragic here is. Yeah, other than the fact that 21 people are mostly tourists are dead trying to go to a museum. Uh, Tunisia's been, they're the one country from the Arab Spring that has actually managed to put together a functioning democracy. And their economy has been in shambles since they overthrew the government. Tourism was their, their, one of their main sources of income. And they're trying to get that back going, and then the Islamists come and and try to stop that. Well, I think there's a lot of Islamic uh, fundamentalist groups that would like to turn the clock back to you know, well, you know, 1500 years ago or so. Yeah. <laughs> or you, you have the um, those assholes uh, from ISIS that were destroying you know precious works of art in the museum. I mean, what, what was that about a month ago now? Mm-hmm. Just crazy. It's even that long ago. Yeah. Yeah. Just erase any history that's not uh, Muslim based. Really? Come on. (laughs) Dirty. This is just fucked up. I don't want war with anybody. That's me personally, but come on, man. Yeah. There's seriously (laughs) something wrong with Islam. Yeah. Seriously. Um, (laughs) You know, Ali Rizvi calling for Muslims to get a. to get a reformation going that wouldn't that be wonderful it would it really would sure help the christians after a while (laughs) yeah not complete assholes yeah and uh speaking of christian products of the reformation (laughs) uh a group of students at andrews university in berrien springs michigan the place i was at eight years ago as a student at the seventh day adventist theological seminary uh, planned a bake sale. Now, this is organized by the unofficial Gay Straight Alliance at Andrews. That sounds nice. All for one. A U L L four letter number four one. Uh, they have about eighty members, and they are forbidden from advertising on campus because the Adventist Church is anti-gay. Uh, so yeah, they aren't allowed to be an official group. They can't advertise. They only get members in from word of mouth. And 
once word started getting out about this bake sale, the Dean of Student Life, Steve Yeagley, had to inform the, the head of this group that the bake sale was forbidden because, and I quote, funds may be raised from nonprofit organizations whose mission and practices do not conflict with those of the university. And the gays are icky. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he said, went on to say there was a perceived conflict between the mission and practices of Andrews University and those of Fierce Chicago, certainly not in their efforts to aid homeless youth, but in their approach to the LGBT issue at large. Uh, Fierce Chicago is a advocacy group that's trying to help homeless gay kids. I, as I recall, the segment of kids that run away the most mm -hmm. because they're in problem trouble ho houses. Yeah. And they are a gay affirming organization. If they helped kids and then told them that they were sinners and needed to live a celibate life, then I'm sure Andrews University would be happy to help them. Mm -hmm. But instead, they want to help these kids live happy, healthy lives. <laughs> Yeah, it just ignore them and they'll disappear and go away. Yeah, that's the Andrews way. Now, one thing that's that's interesting here is the fact that the dean of student life got involved. When I was there, I worked as a student dean in uh, the men's residence halls. And at, in that position, the dean of student life would have been my boss's boss. I never met him, saw him, talked to him. I don't know that I even ever heard his name. <laughs> and yet he directly reached out to this organization to say, knock it the fuck off. That's, that's pretty, that's, that's severe. <laughs> that is severe. <laughs> but anyway, Andrews University is an absolute and utter hellhole. Now, that was the most miserable year of my life. And it wasn't just the fact that it was my final year in the church and I was horribly riddled with cognitive dissonance. Uh, it was also the fact that it is flat and very, very Adventist and very conservative. Uh, oh, it is an absolute and utter hellhole. God damn. <laughs> uh, a megachurch pastor in, in Georgia, Crayflow Dollar. Uh, who might actually be named Michael Smith, as I recall. Yeah. But there's definite debate on that. Uh, he, he's the head of a rather large, uh, like 200,000 member, uh, prosperity gospel organization. Uh, prosperity gospel is, is the belief that, uh, if you serve God well, he will reward you with material wealth. Uh, because, well, Jesus loved the rich people and never told them they had to give away all their, their riches or, They'd have a hard time getting to heaven. No, 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 no. He gives them money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, anyway, his he he was on a, a trip uh, recently, and his his thirty year old uh, Gulfstream uh, was damaged during an aborted takeoff in London, and so he decided to ask for at least three hundred dollars from each of his two hundred thousand members, so that he could buy a new. $65 million Gulfstream jet. As one would, sure. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, his income is huge. His personal net wealth is $27 million. The average member of his church only makes $29,000 a year. Uh, this is a church in, in uh, an Atlanta suburb. And he lives in a... $2.5 million mansion in a more swanky suburb. Uh, this got a lot of flack from around the world. Uh, social media went nuts on this. Uh, bloggers and, and podcasters went nuts on it. Hell, and even other Christians were going nuts on it. It was yeah, awesome. Everybody was, was out to get him for this. <laughs> he pulled the down the donation page. Yeah, I mean, this jerk actually put up a, a web page begging for donations for this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, this is amazing. I love this guy. He is just so fucking blatant about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know it's bad when you have to pull it down. 
But, you know, you can still go to his his website and donate if you want to, mm-hmm. just to the general fund. Yeah. The general fund, so he can buy himself a, another mansion or Gulfstream and, jet. And it's not like, you know, there was any accounting for the money that was already donated donated toward this plane. Mm-hmm. Now that's just gone into the ether. Sorry, you're not getting it back. Oh, it's not the ether. It's his pocket. Oh, sorry, sorry. You're totally right. Yeah. <laughs> And, and we're not paying it on or spending it on excess. Uh, oh, because one of the things with this prosperity gospel is you're supposed to show how how much God has blessed you. So that's why you have to have the big mansion and the fancy car and the nice watch and the expensive suit and oh yeah, none of this off the rack shit. Yeah, and I'm sure it would also would include only the highest dollar hookers and finest blow. All right, moving along, a uh, Republican representative in the state legislature of Arkansas, Justin Harris, adopted three young girls. Uh, before the adoption was complete, he, he sent one back. I guess she was defective. Uh, uh, when, the, the first one got sent to a, like a mental award. Yeah. So then brought in, uh, but went ahead and brought in the other two. And it got weird. Uh, they, well, for one, the foster parents and DHS staff didn't think they were able to handle these girls. They had serious attachment issues and he used his position as a member of the state legislature to basically force the Department of Human Services to give them these children. And shortly after they got them into their home, they became convinced that they were demon-possessed. Yeah, obviously. This all started when they allegedly crushed the family pet to death. And so they started separating the girls from each other and everyone else, locking them in their rooms. The older one uh, was usually just locked in her room, and they monitored her by video camera. Uh, the younger girl wasn't as bad, so she got free reign of the house. They also put the girls in colorless clothes, like took away any bright colors. Uh, the babysitter was pretty freaked out by what was going on there, just monitoring the older girl on video. Yeah. And then the, the Harrises hired some specialists to come in and do a exorcism. Yes, obviously, because that's needed mm-hmm. on on a two year old and a four year old girl. This is while the babysitter, who was a high school student at the time, waited outside the house with the boys. Um, and then it gets worse after fourteen months with these kids. Uh, they decided to give them away. Uh, they they gave them to a a very loving and responsible couple. Mm-hmm. Oh wait, sorry. Please continue. Somebody he worked with, a, a pastor that he worked with in his Growing God's Army preschool. Mm. Yes, Representative Justin Harris runs a preschool called Growing God's Kingdom, which that should have been a big enough of a red flag that somebody would work with him at a place like that. Um, anyway, gave these these girls to um, a, a friend and, and co-worker who raped one of them. And has a history and a legal, you know, has been charged and prosecuted for rape other, for raping other girls. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Yeah. Who is working at, at this children's facility, right? Yeah. 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 A, 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 for background checks. A, uh, now from the article, I couldn't tell for sure whether or not, uh, Eric Cameron Francis was previously arrested or if that was only after this uh, but he's the article i found he was he had a record for the for rape he's now serving 40 years in prison for raping the one girl and sexually assaulting other children <clears throat> yeah this is there is so much wrong with this <laughs> this should not be a thing yeah totally what the fuck for one you shouldn't have a preschool with a creepy name like growing god's kingdom that that's the least of my worries on this one that's just where it starts where the wrong yeah. starts uh members of the legislature should not be abusing their power 
to adopt children. Good loving people, let alone Christians, should not be giving away kids because they can't handle them. Heck, when I adopted a dog, I had to put on the, the, the adoption paperwork under what conditions would I give him up. And the only thing I could think of would be severe illness. And not even his. It'd be mine. If I wasn't actually able to care for him. But these these people treated these girls worse than most people do dogs. And they took kids that they knew had abandonment issues. And what did they do? They separated them, locked them up, subjected them to exorcism, yeah, exorcism, and then yeah. tossed them away so they could be raped by a child molester buddy of his. Remember that oldest kid I was talking about that got sent to the, the mental hospital? Mm-hmm. Six, year, six years old. Seriously? Six years old. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. The, the, uh, oh man, the, the judgment this guy presents, the s- lack of sanity. He definitely should not be running a preschool. He should not be in the state legislature. I don't even know that he should even have custody of his own children. I, yeah, I don't think so. This Eric Francis, though, um, the, the rapist, he was actually listed as a serial predator who had molested other children. Oh, uh, on the raw story article. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And this this whole concept of, of rehoming children is rehoming motherfucker, that's just giving them away. Like yeah. I, I I don't I don't want them. Fuck it. You take them. The the, the normal rules <sighs> to adopt a child is you spend a lot of money, you go through a vigorous screening process, and then you finally get in and might get them if you're considered worthy not just give them away you don't just give someone children ah god damn all right well anyway i think that's enough on that and uh we've got some feedback that sounds nice (laughs) uh I, i can i want this first one okay so uh paul whoever this paul guy is via facebook uh, Jesus Christ, Nick Morgan War, Wesley Benetti, and Dustin Williams. Really, guys? Just cruising right along with my workday, listening to you, my daughter in the kitchen, and you go from geek movie talk to that ending? Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Penis. So I, I, I know Paul listens to our show and has for quite some time. You would think that he would have known that we don't have topics that are off limits. <laughs> You would think when he when uh, he invites me over for WrestleMania and we talk weird shit that uh-huh. he would expect this on the show. <laughs> and considering that he does silly little skits about prostitutes and fucking goats. <laughs> yeah. Uh, pot kettle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So, yeah, that's uh, Paul, our former guest from the <laughs> Chronify Me podcast. Penis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um uh, generally speaking this is as a little rule of thumb from somebody who does not have children giving uh, unsolicited advice to a parent <laughs> if you're listening with your daughter you should be concerned one the first time somebody says fuck because <laughs> that usually means nothing's off limits mm. uh, sgu for example they've loosened up on on steve has loosened up on what he allows he still yeah. edits out fuck I, I heard Steve say shit recently. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. That was amazing. Uh, and, and the other thing is, with a comedian, you can it, expect it's going to go dirty or dark places. Yeah, plus, you know, he's Australian, just never a good thing. Yeah. They, you know, they don't even take their shoes off when they come inside the house. They're just, ew. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this This next one was actually... In reply to Paul's Facebook post, a ways down, <laughs> just listen to it on my drive to Kaikarura, the world's most beautiful place. I was literally laughing out loud, also getting depressed at how fucked up the Australian government is at the moment. Glad I live in New Zealand at the moment, but pissing myself laughing. I'm a feminist, Nick Morgan Moore. You're a bad man. I love it. Wesley Benetti, Dustin Williams, great show. 
Yay! And if anybody is friends with Paul, please send him a private message or feel free to post on his page and say, penis. Thank you. <laughs> and from Cassandra via Facebook, top-notch interview, guys. Probably one of my favorites. Badass. Thank this you. This is still about the one with Nick Morgan Moore. <laughs> And via Twitter from Randy Lamonda, that is at Randy Lamonda, at Nick Morgan Moore, at Atheist Nomads. It seems that Australia treats its indigenous people the same way the U.S. does. Uh, very well. Uh, no, no. Oh, yeah, my bad. <laughs> I, I had to go on a business trip earlier this week. Uh, it was a one-day trip that was... 11 hours long, uh, I had to go to the Fort Hall Indian Reservation. Mm. And I got there, and something dawned on me as I was turning onto Mission Road. We put Fort Hall there to take care of that, that native problem, to fight them, to round them up, and to get them under reservations. And so they get this little bit of land just north of Pocatello, Idaho. So a pretty shitty place on the Snake River Plain that they're stuck with. And what do they name it after that instrument of their oppression and destruction? Mission? Fort Hall. Oh, that's kind of sucky. The Fort yeah. Hall Reservation? Uh-huh. Ooh. Hooray. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever seen a reservation that's on a nice patch of land. Well. Actually, Sukhumish up in here in Paul's boat isn't that bad. Yeah. But, yeah, in general... Yeah. Uh, the Nez Pierce Reservation's not too bad. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, Lew Lewis and Idaho area. Mm. Uh, now, granted, you drive through and the poverty is appalling. Mm. Because, yeah, we treat the, the indigenous population quite poorly. Uh, Suquamish, it's a really small res, and that casino's doing pretty well in it. From what I know, they kicked some money out to a lot of other people. Nice. That's what I that's what I understand at least. I could be totally fucked up wrong though. Now, one thing that's that's kind of sad to think, you know, like the uh Fort Hall Indian Reservation, it should be renamed to something like the Shoshone Bannock Indian Reservation, or maybe Shoshone Bannock Tribal Lands, or something other than Fort Hall. <laughs> Shoshone Bannock or th those are the two tribes that were crammed in together there. And yet to make that happen would require action from the department or the, the Bureau of Indian Affairs, the tribal government, and because it'd be a new treaty, it'd have to be approved by Congress. Mm -hmm. So that would never happen. Nah. No, probably not. <laughs> anyway, if, if you want to depressing. Yeah. Sorry. If you want to get a hold of us, you can always contact us at contact at atheistnomads.com. You can leave us a message at 541 two zero three zero six 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 you can tweet us at atheist nomads or hit us up on facebook facebook.com slash atheist nomads and you know i've had a lot of feedback saying that everybody loved the last show and you know they're very happy that we keep on putting out this great content now it's a great time to you know subscribe and you know maybe kick us a few bucks on paypal or patreon so you know think about it or use our amazon click through on the page because yeah. you know it, it would be awesome and you would never notice a thing we are doing the the 100 by 100 challenge uh 100 an episode by episode 100 which is totally doable maybe yeah <laughs> so come on guys we come we started off strong with this uh and we've gone down since the last episode oh no have we <laughs> yeah well i'll tell you what um Pretty much my entire cooling system in my truck just took a shit, so oh. I'm having to replace my water pump, the the hoses, the 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 hoses to my uh, uh, heater core, and a few other things. So yeah, I'll be using our Amazon click through in a in a day or so <laughs> <laughs> to buy a whole bunch of fucking parts for my truck. Ouch. Yeah, and you know it's doing the podcast is a lot of work, and we are nearing that that three year mark, Fuck. and. You know, just the, the fun of a new hobby powers you through for the first bit, but it's a lot of work. And to maintain the consistency, we're doing this every week. And even when it came time to, you know, with the, the holiday travels I had, we did enough recording and I put enough editing in to make sure we didn't miss a beat 
while I was driving all over the Northwest. And I'm totally sorry about this one. I just couldn't talk the last couple of days. Yeah. Uh, it, it, so a lot of work goes into this. We put a lot of time into it. And you put a lot of time listening to us. An hour oh, yeah. or more every week. And you poor bastards. <laughs> <laughs> and right now, if 62 of you decided to give us $1 per episode, that would be you paying less than a dollar an hour for our content. Uh, that would get yeah. us to our, to our goal. Something like 45 of you gave us 15 bucks or sorry, 15 <laughs> of you. <laughs> Shit. 45. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Maybe like uh, 15 people gave $5 would be just about there too. Yeah. Hey, that ain't much. No. One cup of, cu- one cup of uh, Starbucks a day, you know, you know, cut that out for one, one, a, <laughs> one a month. Yeah. Don't drink your Starbucks. Give it all to us. Whatever. I, yeah. I'm uh, more alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I started drinking a little bit. Sorry. That usually fucks me up a little later. Ah, uh, nice. Anyways. All righty. Well, uh, on that the, note, now that we have debased ourselves by begging for money. No, please give us money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we've debased ourselves. Yes. Uh, <laughs> all right. Thank you all very much for listening. Uh, yeah, sorry we're late. Yeah. It is all Wesley's fault. It really is. Penis. Thank you for listening to another episode of Atheist Nomads. You can find us online at www.atheistnomads.com. Contact us at contact at atheistnomads.com. Or leave us a voicemail message at 541-203-0666. You can also like us on Facebook or leave us a review on iTunes, Zoom, or wherever else you find the podcast. Until next time, this has been The Atheist Nomad.